What's up YouTube, Crystal here, and I've got the third part for my OCs collection. Uh, the third and final part for now, uh, I will probably have some updates, but not for a while. Um, I've pretty much got what I can, or at least what I'm willing to pay for. Some really cool stuff that I'd really love to get from them, but uh, some of the prices are just astronomical, and I, I, I refuse to pay like $50 for a a seven inch, you know, shipped to Canada is just like, no, no way. So uh, for this version or this segment, I've got some CDs here and then I've got a bunch of seven inches. I've got some really cool rare seven inches, um, but I'll get to them after. Now I should also mention that this isn't just OCs. Oh, I think there's only one thing in here that's not OCs, um, but uh, this video isn't just OCs. Uh, there's other John Dwyer projects like Coach Whips, Damage Bug, I had the um, Velvet Underground and Nico compilation, the Castle Face compilation, uh, and this is one of John Dwyer's lesser known projects. They never actually released anything on, C on vinyl. They released pretty much everything either on CD or MP3 format. This is Zeigenbach Kopf. Um, this is like really, really abrasive electronic music. Um, kind of cool, uh, not really my thing now. Back like in high school, maybe 20 years ago, this would have been right up my alley because I was really into things like, uh, I don't know, Panacea and Pansonic and stuff. Um, just like really loud, abrasive, um, you know, European industrial, I guess techno more than anything. I don't know, the words have all changed, like EDM or whatever it's called now, like we called it electronica or techno back in my day, but either way, it's all right. I can't say it's great. I think this was like six bucks brand new, so whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, a uh, few CD versions I have. This is Cool Death of Island Raiders, and uh, this is the CD version that is pretty cheap and easy to find or still seemingly I don't know there's this weird surge in like OC's albums like a lot of things just in the, like the six months I've been actively collecting have just skyrocketed in price things that I paid 20 30 dollars for now people are asking like a hundred to two hundred dollars like I don't really know where that's coming from but um so yeah, if you can't get uh, the Cool Death of Island Raiders on vinyl because it's like 200 bucks now, um, check this out. I think I paid about $10 for my copy um, on Amazon with like, you know, cheap shipping. Uh, and it's good because I didn't get a download code. My copy of Cool Deaths is really old. I don't even know, probably didn't even come with a download code ever. So, you know, I got this for less than you pay on iTunes and I can listen to it on my phone. This is their f second CD, um, OCs. This is OCS before they were the OCs and long before the OCs. Um, this is their second album only ever released on CD, maybe digital, but um, or MP3, but it was never pressed on vinyl. Uh, Narnak Records, this you can get really cheap as well. Um, Spider-Man make an appearance on the back there. Uh, this is good. It's really lo-fi. Um, it's very, very different than uh, newer OCs, which is kind of what I was used to. But um, even these, from here to here, this is their fourth album. Is it fourth? Fifth. This is their fifth album, and this is their second album. And there's a real huge difference in sound just between these two. So these are my DVDs and CDs. Oh no, yeah, three DVDs here. Um, these two are from Live in San Francisco, the, com uh, the live album from, I think, 2015 or 16. Uh, it's okay, nothing special. Uh, and this is my DVD from The Hounds of Foggy Notion. I do have one more, but I, uh, I don't remember where it is. I do have a white and yellow copy uh, of the vinyl, and both of them did have the DVD. Um, I don't know where the other one is. It's probably in my bookshelf or something. 
And uh, this is the CD that I paid way too much for that came in the Zorks Mixed Brews or whatever it's called. Um, I thought this would be tracks from like those weird bizarre demos but it's literally just disc one from uh the compilation record which i have like four times over so i basically ended up paying like 40 bucks for a record with a cd that i already have both of so i was a bit disappointed but i definitely learned a lesson um i guess the thing is it just doesn't say exactly what it is when you look it up online Okay, a um, couple flexies. Really like flexies. I don't know why, they're just so cool. Like, yeah, that's a flexi. Um, this is a really great track, actually. This is called Classic Bananas from, um, oh, geez, I can never remember the name. An Odd Entrances, I think it is. Um, and honestly, that album is a stinker. It's by far the worst studio recording the OCs have put out um, but this track here is actually really good um, it's just like a good kind of mid-era OCs track um, the best part about the album but unfortunately you only get this with one of the colored versions this is the flexi that came in live in San Francisco really cool looking white flexi with ticklish warrior live um i don't know i just love the look of that the aesthetic is just so cool looking i think that looks great but um i definitely doesn't translate well over crappy video uh, yeah this is admittedly my least favorite oc song um fbia2 they did a split with mr quintron and Miss Pussycat, Mr. Quintron, Quintron and Miss Pussycat, um, neither song is that great. Banana Beat is okay, but, uh, this OC's cover is really bad. I don't like it at all. Um, it just sounds goofy and low quality and cheap and whatever. Man, some of these I don't think I've literally ever even played. Um, Wait, Let's Go from the OCs and the Mallard over and under. The Mallard's actually pretty good. I wasn't really familiar with the Mallard. Um, the OC song, I can't really say I particularly like. It's kind of boring. Um, and it is on the singles collection. This is, though, on really nice, clear, neon pink vinyl. And this is... Paul Carey and the OCs. Um, pretty much all of these are on the singles collection, so I honestly almost never play these actual copies because um, I keep them stored in my little box here. This is marbled black and gray, I believe. Yeah. Kind of cool looking. That side's definitely better. This side. Not much to it, but yeah, I like that. I think that looks good there. Um, so far, all the seven inches I've shown have been pretty affordable, nothing too outrageous. Like I said, some of the OC seven inches are just insanely expensive now. Like, I just can't justify spending $50 on like two tracks on a seven inch, you know, $30 for the vinyl or $35 for the vinyl and then $15 to ship to me like I just can't justify that uh, this is a standard black pressing but the tracks on here are really good I don't think there is a colored version of this anywhere um, it is just a standard black uh, 7 inch tidal wave and what was it I just saw it um, Heart Sweats both really great tracks really really like both of them Again, both of them, I think, are on uh, Singles Collection Volume 1, though. Uh, what is this? Maria Stacks, is it? Uh, let's see. No name. I can't even remember. I think this is Maria Stacks, or something to do with Maria. Um, nice, clear vinyl. Only, I think, like a hundred of these pressed. Um... And again, I don't even listen to this 
because I have it already. Uh, I wonder what this is called. I can't even remember. This is a weird one. This is a really interesting OC 7-inch, 4 OCs collectors. Um, several reasons this stands out. First of all, it's on Sub Pop which this is the only thing they've ever done that's appeared on Sub Pop. Also, it's the only album where they appear on the cover, and also it's the only cover, as far as I can think of, other than the live version and the um, singles collection one and two that isn't, like, cartoonish or, you know, artistic or, you know, whatever. Um, it's really interesting. Unfortunately, I, I don't know why, it's really weird, because, of course, the supply and demand thing, um, you know, is kind of how you price records, especially on Discogs. There's like 20 copies of this on Discogs, maybe even more now. It's been a while since I've looked. But, like, the cheapest price for this, people are asking like $30 US. Um, and when they're, this probably cost $5 when it came out in 2000. 13, is it? No. 2009, sorry. I think that's the address for Sub Pop. But yeah, 2009, and there's like 20, 25 copies for sale, and people are like starting prices at 30 bucks. Like, it's just ridiculous. Um, I did have to wait for mine to come up for a good price, but I did end up getting it for pretty reasonable comparatively. Um, okay. This is Fortress. This is a really good, uh, very recent single, Fortress and Man in a Suitcase. This is really good. I like this. Um, and this is not on um, any singles collection, so presumably this will be on the fourth one when it comes out, presumably with um, Moonsick as well. This has really cool, like, maroon, um, ultra clear split. Um, this one I was lucky to get a good price, and yeah, this is another one, I think people are asking like 30 bucks starting price for this, um, and Castle Face was selling it for like $12, um, and it's only a couple years old as well, which is too bad, you know, I hate flipping, because it basically just takes things from people that would really appreciate it, um, and just is mark up for someone else who's, you know, obviously not as big of a a fan or collector or whatever. I'll do that later. I do have two copies of this because they were really cheap. This is uh, uh, the OCs with Ty Siegel. They did The Drag and Maria Stacks. So that their album wasn't Maria Stacks. Uh, both of them are the same, so I'm only gonna show, show one on, um, I believe it's called like Ice Blue Vinyl. But it is really cool. It does look kind of clear in the picture or in the video there, but it is actually like a nice, um, yeah, ice blue or mint blue uh, pressing. Really good. Both of those tracks are really good. And again, they do appear on volume one and two of the singles collection. Okay, only a couple here. These are cool. This is actually my favorite for all of my OC seven inches. These are my favorite. I think. They have several elements that, for me as a collector of OC's records, that I really love. Um, this is, what is it? Friends Denied, and I can't remember. Um, I'll see in a minute, but uh, I have three copies. Got one with a blue cover, white cover, black cover, all with gold, um, silk screened, and they do look really nice. Um, this is, again, this is what I love about indie music. Um, getting these albums that have, you know, that extra bit of uh, TLC, attention, whatever. Um, this is literally just like cardboard as well, or Bristol board. So there's the outside, and then in the inside, Blood in Your Ear, that's it. Blood in Your Ear and Friends Denied. Um, this all silk screened as well. And then you get this, I don't know, silk screened insert that has a little fella there. It says, uh, hello, number 343 out of 638, and then it has, like, some label information on this side. 
But um, I, I like that. This is to me like a very desirable um, format for me for indie records. And luckily enough, these ones aren't too outrageous. Um, I do have the opaque baby blue. Um, the black versions are cheap enough, but the colored ones unfortunately are starting to go up. I paid like 20 bucks and maybe even less for all of my copies. Um, some of them more rare than others, like there's X number of the white sleeve printed, then there's X number of each color of vinyl printed, and they're all mixed up, So, which is cool again, I really like that. So this is pretty much exactly the same thing, just with white cardboard, and of course a different number, this one being 366 with the same little fella there. It almost looks like it was drawn with pen, but I don't know, that seems like a lot of work. I don't know, who knows? Indie labels do put in that extra effort. This is like a, an off-white with some slight black marbling. And I believe this is my green vinyl. Uh, yeah, so exactly the same, but black. And this one is numbered 290 with a very bright lime green. Looks really cool, I like that. But uh, yeah, this is a really great single. Both tracks are really good. I'd like to get a few more different variations, but they're really going up. Um, and this is probably, of my 7 inches, this is probably my prized possession. Um, I was really lucky to get this for a very good price. I think I paid about 20 bucks, um, plus shipping from, like, very reasonable shipping from Germany. Uh, and now it starts at $66, I think it is in Canadian. And um, the vinyl colors are much, much more... Um, I don't know, mass produced, the ones that are cheap. So this again came in different colors and you know, different uh, formats and whatnot. So this is Grave Blockers. I think this is their first uh, actual release as the OCs before they released, um, ooh, what was it? Cool Death of Island Raiders. I think this predates that because it's on a more indie label with a much more lo-fi sound. Uh, and this is a cardboard box, Rock is Hell, is that what it is? Yeah, Rock is Hell Records, um, all silk screen, really nice, durable. Um, and it is a two vinyl set or two seven inch set. It's got a cardboard insert, silk screened. And each album has two discs. I think one disc is always black, and the other disc is how you kind of gauge the rarity. Um, I can't remember, there's like four or five different versions. Um, mine is actually one of the more rare ones. This is the, um, like, I don't know, translucent brown, light brown or marbled brown. There's only 13 of this one pressed. Um, there's a couple others that have like, I don't know, 150 pressed or whatever, but this is one of the more rare ones. I think there's one that were only four or something pressed, but um, I don't know, the prices for this are just ridiculous, like just insane, like for two seven inches. Um, I don't know. It's too bad. Hopefully the market will cool off, you know, in general, or maybe the OCs. Um, bandwagoners will kind of die off, but uh, the people who heard them on um, uh, Breaking Bad or whatever, um, but whatever, I don't know, I'm a, a devout fan, fan for life. Uh, I do actually have um, Orc, I believe it's simply just called Orc, from OCs, they've changed their name again, I do have that on pre-order from the UK for a colored pressing, I am not have no idea what it's going to look like. Uh, they don't even have it listed on Castle Face yet. Uh, they don't have it listed on Amazon yet. Nothing like that. But um, yeah, there you go. That's my entire OCs collection in about 70 minutes, it looks like. About 70 minutes. But um, 
yeah, I'd love to know what you think. Um, I'd love to hear some rare OCs pressings you have. They always interest me. There are some that are super rare, super obscure. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear what you uh, have or what you think, um, etc., etc. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you again soon.